<laughs> so thank you, George, for, for inviting me to, to this seminar. Uh, I inviting me again, I should say, because uh, last time I talked uh, at this uh, uh, Gerard seminar, it was exactly on the same topic, uh, except that at uh, that moment it was uh, quite kind of preliminary. And uh, since then, we have been able to uh, to understand a little better what is going on. And I will try to uh, to give you these explanations. Um, so uh, this is a joint work with uh, several colleagues uh, listed here, uh, all in uh, South America. Um, and uh, the talk is about uh, stationary strong Stackelberg equilibria in stochastic games. So I will start first with uh, um, some, summing up the main uh, principal ideas of uh, this uh, work and this paper. Um, it is uh, devoted to uh, the Stackelberg solution to games. And uh, the principal reason for this is that uh, Stackelberg solutions uh, are appealing, especially in operations research, uh, because they have a, a more predictive potential uh, than uh, Nash equilibria, in the sense that uh, uh, it is easier, uh, in my in my opinion, and in opinion of other people, it is uh, easier to predict what uh, agents will actually do in a, a game uh, when uh, there is a Stackelberg solution uh, instead of a Nash uh, uh, solution. Uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, apparently in the literature, uh, there is a lit much less work done on uh, Stackelberg uh, uh, solutions for dynamic games uh, with, instead of Nash. So we decided to investigate the question of uh, existence and also computation of uh, such, such uh, equilibria. So uh, Stackelberg and stochastic games. So in order to, uh, to do that, uh, we have introduced uh, a dynamic programming operator uh, naturally associated with the game. Um, and uh, we have realized that uh, this operator uh, does not have necessarily fixed points. Uh, the fixed point of uh, the operator are called uh, fixed point equilibria, uh, FPE in the, the remainder. Uh, so the, the operator does not necessarily have first surprise. Um, uh, then when it does, uh, these equilibria are not necessarily uh, equilibria of the game. So there is a difference between uh, the, the fixed point of the operator and the equilibria of the game. And actually, it turns out that there may be no equilibria at all in the game. So all, all, came, all this came as a surprise because we started confident uh, that the operator approach uh, would, uh, would work fine for uh, these games also, and it does not. So these, there are lots of interesting uh, uh, findings in this work. So uh, not to stay on these uh, three negative uh, 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 findings, we uh, provide su sufficient conditions for everything to work well. I will explain uh, later what we mean by that. So these are the ideas of the paper, and uh, you can stay with that and uh, relax now. Uh, the rest of the talk is devoted to technical explanations to back up this, uh, these findings. So uh, I will start with uh, an overview and uh, actually uh, an explanation why we uh, started working on this topic. Uh, the the uh, origin of the, the question is uh, with the security games. Um, uh, security games uh, have been uh, introduced uh, 15 years ago, let's say, uh, and they, uh, they became uh, quite uh, fashionable. And uh, indeed, there is... Uh, uh, chapter on this uh, class of games in uh, the handbook on dynamic game theory edited by uh, Tamer Bachar and George. Uh, that's the last chapter. And actually, it turns out to be the, the only one uh, to talk about uh, Stackelberg uh, equilibria. So the whole book is devoted to dynamic games, but uh, there is only one that talks about Stackelberg uh, solutions. Um, this chapter does indeed uh, uh, put forward the idea that for uh, the class of security games, uh, let's say police and, uh, and terrorist games, um, th the relevant uh, solution uh, is uh, what we will uh, introduce now as the strong Stackelberg equilibrium. So in order to uh, give the uh, technical uh, definitions uh, for, for this concept, uh, I first have to uh, come back to uh, 
the solution concept uh, of Stackelberg, a well-known to game theorists, of course. Uh, but uh, since there will be a little uh, uh, twist in the definition, I, I will first start with the standard definition of uh, the Stackelberg solution, which also allows me to introduce the main notation of the talk. So there will be two players, A and B. Uh, the player A will be called uh, player A, also a leader in the Stackelberg game. And uh, with respect to the security game, uh, it's called the defender. Uh, let's say that's the police. And there will be a second player, B, uh, called the follower, uh, and also the attacker, that's the bad guys. Uh, each uh, player has a set of strategies, or they have a set of actions, A and B uh, respectively, uh, but also a set of strategies, which uh, I call WA and WB. So the difference between uh, actions and strategies, of course, you know, is typically that uh, uh, strategies may be uh, just the actions, that's called the pure strategies, but they may be also uh, mixed strategies, that is uh, probabilistic mixtures of, uh, of actions. There will be play payoffs for each player, so that's a general non-zero sum game. Huh? And uh, the step uh, of the, uh, let's say, static game, also it's uh, already sequential, uh, is that uh, player A uh, chooses some action A and plays it. Player B observes the action perfectly and then chooses uh, the uh, action B uh, so as uh, uh, rationally to uh, optimize uh, her uh, payoff. So that's the last pay, last step of the game. Then the payoffs corresponding to the deterministic uh, actions played are uh, uh, are given to the players. And uh, given this sequential uh, uh, organization, uh, the goal of uh, player B is already uh, stated. It's optimized uh, her uh, payoff. But the goal of player A is also to uh, optimize her expected payoff. Uh, I, I write expected because it's possible that there is randomness involved. OK? So uh, by choosing strategically uh, the first action A, uh, player, B, uh, player A can perhaps optimize her payoff. Why? Because that's the principle of Stackelberg ID. Uh, if B's reaction to A is a unique strategy, sorry, if B's reaction to A's action A is a unique strategy, call it in this slide, gamma of A, uh, then uh, A can predict uh, for each action A what B will do. So she just has to choose the strategy that will maximize her own payoff uh, given by this formula. So uh, that's just the maximization. Uh, the formula is the double sum and the maximization is over uh, all the possible uh, strategies in uh, A set. So that's, uh, that's easy, that's, uh, that's the the predictability feature of the Stackelberg games that A can predict what B will do. So uh, it's easy to optimize her payoff. But uh, what happens is that if the uh, reaction of uh, B is not a unique strategy, if the cardinal of this set is larger than one, then everything breaks down because A is unable to predict what B will do. And this uh, prevents A to, uh, to perform optimization. So some more elaborate uh, co solution concept is needed. And uh, one of these uh, is the strong Stackelberg uh, uh, solution, uh, a definition of which is given here, uh, accredited to a uh, work of uh, Breton, Al and Hori uh, in 1988. Um, since the reaction uh, of B to an action A is not unique, is a set in general, well, define this set, and then, call a strong Stackelberg equilibrium, a pair of uh, actions, uh, such that uh, the action of uh, player B is indeed in the set of uh, reactions, best reactions to the, the action of player A. But the uh, reward of player A uh, evaluated at this couple A star, B star, is the largest possible, given that B is uh, a reaction to uh, 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 the, the action of A. 
okay so this uh, sort of uh, uh, optimization uh, process is also called a bi-level programming uh, or actually is, is part of the class of bi-level uh, optimization programs but i will not develop this uh, idea in in the, the talk it's just for connecting uh, concepts I have a question. Uh, yes, please. Uh, so here, the follower observes the randomized policy, not the actions, right? No. Uh, here, the follower observes the action. OK. Uh, that, because in security games, they typically assume that the follower uh, observes. I, indeed, indeed, I will come to that. But okay. uh, I, I, I start with the basic uh, Stackelberg ideas, precisely to highlight the difference with what we are going to do. Uh, which is exactly what you're saying. So, uh, but it's just uh, because uh, it's needed uh, in Stackelberg uh, solutions in general, uh, this one and the, the other ones, uh, to uh, choose uh, uh, to break ties to, to when there is a problem, uh, an expect. Oh, sorry, when the it's exactly what is written there. When the reaction of player B is not unique, uh, some some uh, more uh, some additional specification is needed in the optimization of player A. That's what I'm doing here. And then um, uh, I come to uh, exactly the what you're mentioning um, in uh, security games and other classes of games. Actually, that's not exactly what is happening. Uh, the the sequence of uh, decisions and observations is uh, corresponds to more to what is called in some papers leadership games. So uh, I refer here for to the, this paper of uh, von Stengel and Zamir, but uh, I don't I do not know exactly where the the concept is introduced. Uh, th these authors uh, refer to uh, uh, von uh, to um, Morgenstern uh, and. Um, von Neumann, but uh, I, I don't know if this, uh, it has been introduced there. And then, anyway, uh, this um, class of games, or perhaps a variant of Stackelberg games, goes as follows. So player A does not, um, let's say, player A announces a strategy in the uh, set of strategies. So he says, she says, I will play a, uh, A1, or I will play A2, or more uh, usefully, uh, I will play uh, either one with pr probability one half, one half. And that's the only information uh, given to player B. So player B, knowing this, uh, reacts optimally by uh, optimizing her expected payoff. Then, and I did not write these steps on the slide, uh, player, player, both players play their action. Uh, player B does not observe uh, player A as action in each, at this moment, they get the reward. And if the game is uh, indeed repeated, then the actions are uh, revealed to uh, each player. But uh, when the game is static, that's the only thing that is known to the players. So indeed, as uh, you mentioned in the question, here player B does not observe the action of A, but that observes the strategy of A. So if uh, the strategy set uh, given to player A is uh, exactly uh, the set of actions, there is no uh, difference. But uh, if it is different, then there is a big difference. So uh, in, the in the papers about uh, leadership games, this concept uh, uh, goes always with the uh, idea of commitment on the part of player A. That is, uh, if this game is repeated, uh, player A has to uh, do what, what she says that is play uh, effectively uh, the strategy she has announced, otherwise uh, it's, not, it's not going to work. And indeed, if the game is repeated, player B can observe uh, the uh, sequence of actions and uh, performing statistics and data analysis can test whether the uh, announcement of A uh, is, uh, is indeed uh, correct or if uh, A is cheating. And uh, actually, what we can say is that player B can actually uh, uh, react to the strategy observed instead of what is announced. And that's precisely what happens in, in security games in which the police does not announce the strategy. Even if it's random, they are not going to communicate about it. But uh, they uh, make the assumption that the bad guys are observing what they do 
where they will send the patrols day after day and uh, making statistics on that, they will get an idea of what is the uh, strategy, the random strategy of player A. So did I answer the, the question? Yes. Okay. Uh, no more questions uh, in the audience? Apparently not, so uh, let me proceed. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's the idea for uh, static games. Now, what about dynamic games? So in dynamic games, uh, as you all know, uh, there, there is the additional concept of a state uh, and the state space called S in my uh, talk. Uh, the rewards of uh, players will depend not only on the actions, but also on the, on the state. The state uh, will evolve uh, according to a Markovian uh, probability transition, fun transition function depending on the actions. And uh, the players will have a stream of rewards, uh, random, and they have to uh, aggregate them. Uh, and what we choose as uh, aggregation here is the expected uh, discounted, uh, total discounted payoff of uh, each player. Okay, so uh, here, uh, so this uh, value uh, of player i uh, depends on the initial state s, and uh, uh, what will actually turns out to be very important in the following is that you have to realize that this optimization problem of uh, both players is actually multi-objective, that is, uh, the player will want to uh, maximize at the same time the value for all states. At least that's what we are trying to do. If the st initial state is uh, a, a given state, well, it's reasonable to optimize the value at, at that state. But uh, what uh, the literature does in general is try to optimize at the same time for all states. Optimize with respect to what? Well, with respect to uh, a set of strategies that is uh, to be defined and given some information, uh, which is also to be uh, defined uh, in, in, in the, in, before starting to, uh, to, to compute a solution. And that's what makes a, a whole variance of uh, uh, possibilities. So, uh, Sticking, uh, let's say, to the ideas of uh, security games and uh, related games, uh, what will be the, the sequence of steps there? Uh, well, A will announce a strategy, and the strategy will be a sequence of, uh, of uh, let's mix, possibly mixed uh, uh, strategies. Um, sorry. A strategy, a dynamic strategy will be a sequence of static strategies. Each one will be uh, in the set WA. B uh, should react to this announcement. Uh, and uh, it will give also a sequence of uh, strategies uh, at each step. And then uh, knowing the reaction, A should try to maximize uh, her reward uh, at the state S by picking the sequence F0, F1, F2 uh, correctly. That, that would be a quite general, uh, con let's say, a framework for uh, op Stackelberg optimization in such games. However, uh, there are various problems. Uh, it has been shown that uh, uh, A's optimum is not a stationary strategy in general. Uh, and uh, okay, perhaps it's not surprising to you, but uh, uh, you have to remind uh, that the basic idea of all this is is uh, uh, is to uh, refer to Markov decision processes. And in Markov decision processes, precisely, it's known that uh, there exist stationary strategies that are optimal. But uh, in these games, no. So it's already bad news. And in addition, computing these uh, optimal strategies in general, uh, co computationally, uh, algorithmically very hard. So um, given this uh, bad uh, news, uh, many authors uh, recommend to actually focus on stationary feedback strategies. Uh, okay, they are not going to be uh, optimal, but at least uh, they have the feature that uh, if A plays uh, such a, st uh, uh, a strategy, 
Then, um, according to Markov decision process theory that I just reminded, uh, the optimal uh, response of B will be also a stationary policy. Or at least there is a stationary policy that is an optimal response. And then uh, uh, everything stays in the domain of uh, feedback strategies and uh, we can uh, make uh, reasonings just on this set. So that's uh, that's the good uh, feature of this. Even, uh, and, and, and that's, uh, these features uh, is what also uh, I call the predictability uh, potential of uh, the Stackelberg solution. Okay, so uh, here are the two last lines uh, refer to the idea that, uh, again, uh, since the reaction may not be uh, unique for player B, uh, there is the, the, the need to, uh, to put, to, to, to refine the concept and we uh, adopt the stronger uh, reaction, uh, the strong Stackelberg solution in the concept. And that finally leads me to uh, the definition of uh, what we are going to study. So it's been uh, quite long, but uh, at least we're there. So um, now we are we are dealing with uh, stationary uh, st uh, strategies, F and G. Uh, uh, and uh, for uh, if the strategy of player A is to repeat, the, the dynamic strategy is to repeat F uh, every, at every step, and the strategy of player B is to repeat G at every step, then this will uh, result in a Markov reward process, and uh, it's uh, easy to evaluate the value uh, obtained by uh, each of the players. Okay, so it's called V, FG of the initial state S with the, in, the subscript I uh, for each player, I, uh, A or B. And then, um, the uh, strategy pair F star G star will be a strong Stackelberg equilibrium in stationary strategies, S, 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 E. If uh, G star is in the set of best reactions of player B to F star, and if in addition, the value obtained by A at this pair of strategies for the state S is the best possible it can get uh, by uh, picking uh, um, it's uh, sorry by assuming that uh, player B is playing one G in uh, her best reaction set to uh, the strategy F. Okay, and uh, in red because uh, it's important. I repeat. Uh, this has to be uh, uh, true for all state S in uh, the state space. I have a question. Uh, Please. So uh, here uh, you are only looking for pure strategies. Mm, no, no. Okay. No, no. F and G are uh, possibly mixed strategies. Okay. So, uh, so the uh, assuming stationary strategies does not uh, eliminate. Mix the strategies, right? No, no. It's uh, uh, the it's the mix. It's the general Markovian strategies. So they are they are Markovian feedback of the state, but in general, uh, mixed strategies. Okay, thanks. So uh, Alain, uh, yes, please. Uh, Alain, what do we know about the uh, the state S is perfectly observable by the players once they are in uh, that state is it or uh, uh, yes yes in uh, s is completely known in in yes in this uh, framework of dynamic games as the the state s is revealed uh, exactly to the the players once they um, so, so after the action is played they don't know where they're going to go but once they are in that state they know where they are um yes okay they, yes i should have been more precise about this uh, indeed uh, the steps are uh, uh the, the, it's it's a sort of two level game uh, in the sense that uh uh player player a announced the strategy f which is random in general player b reacts with strategy g which could be random but actually can be also the uh, pure strategy and then uh, the markov chain starts and uh 
um, mechanically, each player applies uh, the, these actions in every state. Okay, yes. So uh, before starting with our study, I uh, have a few slides uh, mentioning that uh, we are not the first to, uh, to, to do that, uh, but also to observe that uh, the literature on Stackelberg uh, equilibria in dynamic games is not very large. And also it's split in three uh, publication communities, uh, mathematics and economics on the one side, uh, artificial intelligence on another side, and operations research also. And uh, these, uh, well, the, these bodies of literature are not very well connected. Uh, not, not everybody knows about uh, the results in, uh, in the mathematical literature, for instance. Uh, also, uh, there are lots of uh, things imprecise in some of the, these papers, but that's, let us not dwell on about that. Uh, let us just observe that in the literature, the question, although this concept has been uh, used in several papers, sometimes uh, even defined <laughs> properly in some papers, uh, the, the question of existence of such an equilibrium is, uh, is not explicitly mentioned. So it, gives us, it gave us the impression that uh, it was of use that there is always uh, such a strong Stackelberg equilibrium in the dynamic games. But actually, it's, that's it's not even the case. Um, but uh, since we uh, did not have uh, uh, doubts about that uh, initially, we uh, decided to uh, attack the problem uh, and use the operator approach. Why uh, did we do that? Because the operator approach is uh, well known in the literature uh, and very useful for solving MDPs. Competitive MDPs that are dynamic games with uh, the Nash solution, and also some Stackel Stackelberg games, uh, typically the sequential Stackelberg games uh, uh, introduced in the, the paper I already mentioned. And every time the operator approach uh, provides at least existence results uh, in mixed strategies usually, and also uh, provides uh, sometimes uh, algorithms for computing the, uh, the results. So uh, it's with this idea that uh, we started uh, using the operator approach in the games I just uh, defined. I will uh, review uh, this uh, operator approach here uh, by, start, uh, by starting the, the basic ideas of the operator approach in MDP theory, because that's where it comes from and that that's, it has been uh, uh, the, the initial approach has been, uh, let's say, adapted to uh, other sorts of uh, dynamic systems. Um, and the uh, basic ideas are, are written there. That's the one slide uh, approach for MDP. Uh, in Markov decision processes, it is, uh, it, it is first proved that the value function that is the optimum uh, that can the best value that can be obtained uh, starting from uh, the state x is uh, a solution of this equation uh, where as in introduced in the previous slides r is the reward q is the transition kernel and beta is the uh, discount factor and this uh, equation which is actually a set of equations because there is one equation for each x in the state space uh, can be seen as the fixed point equation uh, in the following way. You, you first define uh, uh, with the right hand side, uh, you, you, you understand this right hand side as an operator. It gives you a new function. Uh, starting with the function V, it gives you a new function that is called T of V. And uh, uh, put this in the equation, you have an optimum, uh, sorry, the optimum, the optimality equation is a fixed point of this operator. And uh, the use, wh wh why is it useful to define this operator in the first place? Because uh, it can be shown that it is a contractive operator. So uh, uh, it gives you existence and uniqueness of the fixed point. And also uh, since uh, the iterates of the operator approach the optimum, uh, then you can uh, have the idea of computing the optimum or approximating the optimum by uh, using uh, what is called value iteration that is applying repeatedly the operator. 
This uh, is very well known for uh, Markov decision processes, and it is also uh, possible to do the same thing for uh, what are co uh, called uh, um, competitive Markov decision processes in uh, the book of uh, Filar and Vries, uh, or the Chaplet's uh, stochastic uh, uh, so stochastic games, initially zero sum games, but also in general sums, and usually, usually uh, sorry, using uh, appropriate operators, it is possible to prove that uh, for such games. Uh, uh, there is a, a unique, uh, oh, uh, sorry, there is a, uh, at least an equilibrium point. So that's the, where we started with, what we started with. And the idea for us was to, uh, okay, define uh, the appropriate operator in our uh, um, um, leader Stackelberg games. Uh, and it is done um, uh, using, uh, uh, by doing step by step by uh, first uh, defining uh, the dynamic programming operator for uh, a pair of uh, stationary strategies. I skip the details, okay? So he, given a function V, uh, strategies F and G for both players and the state S, it gives you a new function uh, that is given by this uh, formula. So, uh, that, that defines, so uh, I, I must uh, not, not go too fast uh, on this. Uh, it, it depends on the value function V. It gives you a new function. And uh, so um, for player B, it allows to define uh, what would be uh, called the strong reaction set uh, of the follower with a scrap value V. So given that, uh, 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 so you imagine that there, there player B uh, plays the following uh, game, uh, sorry, uh, has the following problem. The state is S, player A will play the strategy F. This will, uh, there will be one step of the game, player B will win something. And then uh, at the next step, uh, instead of continuing the game, player B will uh, gain the value of V at the next step. Okay, the state will evolve and uh, player B will get as a reward the value V at this uh, new uh, state. Okay, so this, this optimization problem is uh, to find, uh, uh, sorry about the confusion of notation, to find a, a, a strategy uh, here beta in the uh, reaction set uh, of uh, player B that optimizes uh, this uh, uh return function with scrap value v okay so uh, it defines an extend uh, a new sort of uh, reaction set that depends not only on the state and what the other player does but also on this uh value function so in order to uh make this set uh, to reduce this set to a unique uh strategy uh, we had uh, the ID that ties are broken in favor of A, that's the strong Stackelberg uh, ID. And if there are still ties, uh, we are need to some sort of ordering to uh, find one strategy, uh, one unique strategy uh, among the solutions. So given this optimization of player B, now it's turned for A, player A to optimize her own reward. So given the set S, and also this uh, scrap value V, player A has to find uh, a strategy F depending on S that will optimize uh, her own reward that is given by this complicated formula in which you can see that the strategy played by player B does depend on F, but also on V. So that's the reaction set of the leader with uh, the scrap value V. Now, um, um, this allows to define an operator on the value functions, given again by this complicated formula, but you have to understand that the operator just assumes that uh, player B is, is playing uh, the best response to uh, the best uh, thing player A can do. 
okay, given the state S and the value, uh, the scrap value V. And you, you, the, uh, it's interesting to write down this complicated formula because you see indeed it is complicated. It depends on the function. The operator itself depends on the function V. It is applied to the function V, but it does depend on the function V at several uh, uh, places here. And uh, somehow it explains, this complexity explains why we are going to have bad surprises. But uh, before that, uh, I conclude with the definition of what would be an equilibrium in this game uh, at last. So uh, the pair of strategies, stationary strategies, huh? F star G star will be an equilibrium if the value obtained by uh, the pair of players, here V star is the pair V A star and V B star, okay? Fixed point of this uh, value uh, of some operator, but uh, it's just the value the, obtained by playing these pair of stationary strategies is first a, a fixed point of the operator here, and then uh, satisfies for each state S the features that uh, G star is in the best responses of uh, player B with respect to the state S, the uh, strategy F star of A and the value, the scrap value V star, and also the value of V star uh, for player A at state S is the best it can get uh, by assuming that uh, player B is uh, doing one of these uh, best responses, okay? So it, it looks like uh, the definition of strong Stackelberg equilibria uh, here, except that uh, we have added, uh, added the value function V, okay? Value function V star. And it looks natural because that's what uh, everybody does in uh, the context of MDPs and also in the context of uh, um, uh, competitive MDPs. Uh, so uh, we do it also, and we expect that it will give the same results uh, as uh, the uh, original definition, because that's what it does in these uh, in the two examples I have given. So we uh, uh, go forward with this ID and uh, try to compute uh, these things here. Uh, by uh, the value function approach, because we have an operator, we can iterate it and uh, see uh, to what it converges. And there are negative results. There are positive ones, uh, but I, I choose to, uh, to start with the, the surprises, uh, just in case I do not have time to uh, finish my talk. Uh, the surprise is uh, that it does not always converge. And indeed, uh, if you uh, pick uh, the example, uh, the stylized example I have uh, written here, um, it does not. So do not uh, uh, spend time trying to uh, learn the features of the game because I will uh, explain them in detail uh, a little later. So there are there are assumptions on the parameters of these games. Uh, there is a parameter aim, a parameter epsilon. Beta B is the discount factor of player B. Uh, there are transitions and uh, payoffs. I will uh, explain them. And if you do iter value iteration to uh, of the dynamic of the operator of the game uh, to this uh, uh, case, uh, you observe that the value uh, function evaluated at each state s one and s two there are two states huh? uh, for each player leader and follower uh, exhibits this uh, pattern here. So for the leader, it looks pretty constant at least uh, at this uh, scale. But for the follower, uh, you have this uh, behavior that uh, looks like a convergence, but suddenly there is, a, uh, let's say, some sort of uh, go back to the initial state and uh, it repeats like this, apparently, according to some cycle. So uh, the value function approach does not converge. Uh, there is no fixed point to this operator. Uh, actually, that's not, um, sorry, the, the two, Two IDs are different. Uh, the value function, the value iteration with the initial values that we have chosen does not converge. Okay, perhaps it's a bad choice of, of uh, initial uh, state. No, actually the operator does not have a fixed point. Uh, it can be proved. 
And actually, it can be also proved that there is not even a strong Stackelberg equilibrium in stationary strategies, which I'm going to explain right now. So the principle of this uh, counter example, let's call it this way, is the following. Actually, the rewards of both players do not depend on the state, just depend on the actions. And they are given by these two tables. So the reward of player A is one if uh, player A, A plays A1, and if player B plays B1, and zero otherwise. So obviously, player A has interest to play A1, and also has interest that player B plays B1. Keep that in mind. Player B has the following table. Uh, if A1, B1 is indeed uh, played, uh, uh, she gets zero. But if she plays uh, a, a B2 uh, uh, and player uh, A plays A1, uh, she gets epsilon, uh, let's say a small value, but positive value. Uh, if player uh, A plays A2, then uh, player B is indifferent, but uh, gets a, a big, uh, large uh, a negative reward. Now, uh, the state uh, does, does matter because it changes, okay? And it changes, actually, uh, if uh, uh, the players play anything else than A1, B2, B1. So I have a transition diagram here. If A1, B1 is played, then the state, same state is uh, at the next step, be it S1 or S2. But if anything else is played, there is a state, uh, a transition set, okay? So as I just said, uh, uh, player A's interest for optimization is that this should be played, this, this pair of uh, actions. But if player A plays A1, play, player B's response is uh, uh, P2 and not B1. So that's a problem for player A. But uh, she can uh, get around by menacing player B to play A2 at the opposite state let's let's uh, let's say we are in state s1 so if player uh, a says in, in state 2 i will play a2 then player b will will uh, realize that at the next step uh, she will get minus m uh, even if she does if she gets epsilon at this state at the next uh, step she will get minus m so that's bad for her okay uh, but uh, player A should not play B2 because if she does, uh, she will get zero. So uh, what happens is that uh, uh, player A's optimum strategy is actually to uh, pretend uh, she will play A2 in the other state, but actually play A1 in every state. Okay. Uh, so uh, but, uh, what will player B do? do? Uh, she, she will play uh actually b1 if she has uh, interest in doing so so she ev evaluates her expected payoff and uh to to simplify the computation here uh if uh, she plays b2 she will get epsilon at the current step but she will get minus m at the next step uh, whereas uh, she, if she plays Z, uh, b1 she will get zero and uh, indeed, we have put the condition on uh, the parameters of the problem so that she, this is a, absolute, this is indeed negative. So uh, to conclude, uh, but cheating a little bit on the details, uh, here we, have, we do not have a, a, a stationary strategy strong Stackelberg equilibrium because uh, it is in the interest of A to uh, change uh, to to not to do to do not to not play uh, a stationary strategy, <clears throat> and we uh, conclude from this example that uh, in general there does not exist a strong Stackelberg uh, equilibrium. Uh, that value iteration does not converge, and uh, developing other examples I will not show uh, uh, here today. Uh, there are even uh, stranger cases where value iteration does converge. But the uh, limit point is not uh, a stationary, uh, a strong stationary equilibrium. Uh, and there are even cases where there is an equilibrium, but value iteration does not converge to it, at least not from any initial condition, because the operator is in general not contractive and actually not even continuous. So very complicated uh, uh, thing. Okay.
So uh, let me now uh, conclude the talk with a, a brief overview of uh, the positive results. Um, so indeed, there are cases where everything works well in the sense that uh, strong stationary equilibria do exist. Fixed points equilibria also exist. Uh, the uh, dynamic programming operator does converge to the fixed point. And uh, the two concepts coincide just as in uh, Markov decision processes. But this requires some assumptions. So one such assumption is to assume that uh, uh, the player B has what we call myopic strategies, myopic follower strategies. So we call a game with myopic follower strategies if, uh, to, to use the concepts already uh, mentioned in previous slides, uh, the reaction uh, of player B to the state S the uh, strategy f of player a and uh, a scrap value v vb in that case uh, is actually independent of the value vb so uh, the, the reaction of player b is uh, doesn't care about the scrap value um, so uh, that's what that's why it's called a uh, myopic uh, strategy. So player B uh, cares only about uh, the current step of the game and not about future states, steps, and future states. So in that case, we have an existence theorem. Uh, if a game has this feature of being with myopic follower strategies, it has a unique fixed point equilibrium, which is also a stationary uh, strong Stackelberg equilibrium. Value iteration converges geometrically to this uh, equilibrium. So uh, uh, the, the proof is a little complex, but it, it depends on the idea that uh, uh, if the player B um, doesn't care about her own uh, uh, scrap value, then what player uh, A does depends only on her own scrap value and not on player B's scrap value. So uh, this defines uh, an operator just on uh, values of player A, and this operator turns out to be a, a good operator, contractive, unique fixed point, blah, 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 blah. So that's uh, the essence of the, of the, the proof. So good news, uh, there is a class of games that uh, have this uh, good feature of uh, everything going well. Uh, what I, I would say is the, the downside of it is that uh, there are not that many uh, games of this sort because uh, we can prove also that uh, myopic follower strategies uh, are equivalent to uh, having either uh, the discount factor of player B equal to zero or having uh, the transition kernel depending only on the action of player A called leader controlled uh, games. So uh, that, that's not all games that can have this feature, but uh, at least I, I uh, observe here that uh, these uh, um, assumptions here are on the transitions of the game, uh, the dynamic features of the game, and not on the instantaneous reward. So that's a good thing. So let me continue a little more uh, uh, with the other other games that have uh, good features. Let's say uh, so. Did I skip uh, transparency? Ah, no, sorry. Uh, no, so sorry. Uh, I, I made the confusion. I, uh, before I do I do that, I just observed that uh, although uh, restricted, this class of game contains uh, lots of interesting games. For instance, uh, uh, the multi-stage games are uh, go, uh, go this way. Uh, they, there is a set a sequence of uh, states: S1, S2, SK. At each step, the game is possibly different. And then the game stops. So let's say that it's it's absorbing there. It's, the last game is played forever. Uh, and uh, actually, it's a, a, a special case of uh, the leader controlled uh, game because the transition here does not depend on uh, actions. Uh, so the, the leader does not control anything. Uh, not, nobody controls anything. And uh, as a particular case of the particular case, there is a single state case. So uh, meaning that uh, the results we have uh, that apply to uh, myopic followers uh, apply a priori, uh, a fortiori to uh, a single state game. 
Um, now I uh, also mentioned other examples where we have been able to prove uh, properties of uh, either uh, stationary equilibria or fixed point equilibria. Uh, those are the zero sum games uh, in which we can prove uh, there are fixed point equilibria, not necessary that there are uh, strong Stackelberg ones. The acyclic games and the team games, uh, which I will uh, now describe. So uh, <clears throat> I will describe, uh, I chose to describe these two because uh, everybody knows what are zero sum games, but perhaps not what are the other games. So uh, an acyclic game is uh, has the following features. So the state space can be uh, split in two uh, subsets. One uh, denoted by S bottom here, which is a set of absorbing states. Meaning that what uh, whatever the the players are doing, uh, the state will stay there. And then uh, the other uh, part of the state has the feature that uh, if it is possible through a sequence of transitions to go from one state to uh, s to another state s prime, meaning s prime is reachable from uh, s, then uh, the reverse is not possible. So uh, there are no, no loops, let's say, in the state space. So that's why the game is called acyclic. Again, uh, these are assumptions that do not uh, bear on the rewards, just on the transition kernel. Yeah. And then we can prove that uh, in such a game, uh, there is a fixed point equilibrium, although there is not, in general, a stationary, a strong stationary uh, Stackelberg equilibrium. And I conclude with team games. Team games uh, uh, or uh, common goal games or identical game goal games uh, uh, are defined as follows in uh, slight generalization we've invented. First, uh, the, both uh, discount factors are equal and uh, there are uh, real constants, mu and uh, positive nu, such that the reward given to B is uh, given by this formula. So it's a proportion of, uh, 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 I, I, Proportion, I don't know. It's uh, um, the reward given to A multiplied by some positive constant plus posit possibly uh, another uh, constant. Uh, the common uh, goal game is obtained when you have uh, mu equal to zero and mu equal to one. And in there, the rewards are exactly the same. But actually, this generalization does not uh, change uh, much in uh, the proof. So, uh, uh, we have adopted it. And here, contrary to the previous assumptions I have made on special cases, here the, uh, the assumptions is just on rewards, not on the uh, structure of transitions. So uh, I'm, I'm finishing and I want to, to leave some time for uh, uh, questions. So uh, there is a construction in that case that allows to uh, state the theorem that uh, uh, there is a constructed pair F G uh, that is uh, an equilibrium for both concepts, the strong Sackelberg one and the fixed point equilibrium uh, with the values given by this formula. So uh, the uh, the argument here is that it's not very uh, surprising given that uh, uh, the both players will have an incentive to cooperate instead of. Uh, uh, competi competing so that uh, here the the there is actually a Markov decision process that is hidden behind and uh, all what applies to Markov decision processes apply to these uh, games also. And this leads me to the conclusion, uh, which is the same I uh, I uh, gave in a talk uh, two years ago, meaning that uh, we have not progressed much on that. So uh, there are lots of problems here. Uh, fixed point equilibria may or may not ex exist. Uh, Translationary equilibria may or may not exist. So uh, the question here is really to continue finding uh, uh, sufficient conditions for existence and coincidence of these uh, concepts. So that I will just conclude this way and uh, show the, the link to the uh, research report. Thank you for listening. <laughs>